Dr. Mehdi Hatamian is the founder and CEO of Two Pi Sigma Corporation, a biomedical company working on next generation cancer screening devices and technology. And with me is Dr. Mehdi. Great to have you here and to hear about the company. Um, let's start with what motivated you to start Two Pi Sigma. Great to be here. Thanks for the time. Um, what motivated me is, um, I should say, unfortunately, the most tragic uh, event of my life, uh, the loss of my sister to brain cancer. And because we were so close, it really affected me. Um, following that, she died on January 1st of 2001, on New Year's Day of 2001. Uh, following that, I ended up um, investing in cancer research and cancer companies. And um, the best thing that came out of that was that I got to know some world-renowned scientists, microbiologists, biochemists that were working on cancer in general, treatment mostly. And uh, this became a kind of side passion of mine uh, all along when I worked at Broadcom that just to follow this, and I always wanted to see what technology can do to help in any way. Mm -hmm. And um, had the ideas for cancer screening, had ideas for um, rapid tests, many different things where um, I wanted to see how you can throw technology at things, being a hardcore engineer, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started learning a little bit of biology as an engineer, and that sort of makes you think a little differently. Uh, in 2016, this passion got so intense that I thought I owe it to myself to quit, uh, literally a dream job that I had back then. To quit that, I couldn't be any happier that I did it and start this company. You start the cancer company. Screen. So let's talk about what 2 Pi Sigma does and what particular devices and technology that you have. One, three, yeah. Uh, so our goal is to provide a cheap and reliable cancer screening test. The goal is a fifty dollars test right? that uh, is reliable enough, easy enough, so you can regularly do this. Our goal is once a month. Right? Uh, cancer is, for all practical purposes, as far as we're concerned, a random event. Someday you find out that you have cancer, and you got to do something about it. And uh, one great way to catch a random event is to sample it as high frequency as you can, right? Uh, well, that's not totally possible today uh, because of the fact that the tests are just, well, one thing, they're expensive. You cannot really do that every month. Insurance company is not going to pay for mm -hmm. it. They are, it's just going to be cumbersome for you to do that, go to the lab, do this every month, da -da -da -da. so it doesn't happen, right? Um, so our goal is to provide this low cost, as I said, the target is a $50 test that uses only a few microliters of blood mm -hmm. and reliable enough to detect the majority of cancers. Biology, you never say 100%, it's never going to be 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, but for all practical purposes, if you cover the first 15, 16, 17 cancers, you've covered a huge percentage of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like the first four cancers that we had started working on, lung, breast, colon, and prostate, they constitute 50% of all the cancers in the world. So mm -hmm. those four by themselves are great to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, to, to, to detect as early as possible. Mm -hmm. right? And one of the best weapons in fighting cancer is really early detection. And I don't think anyone argues with that. Yeah. You know, it's common sense. And that's, that's the goal, to be able to provide that by combining, this is totally multidisciplinary, combining uh, biology, biochemistry, electronics, technology, and even a lot of mechanical engineering things uh, all together in a simple test device. Very interesting. Would this be for people who, say, have a history of cancer in their family, or would it be for everybody? Our goal is for this, it's called the screening, would be for everybody, right? Uh, if uh, women do mammogram regularly, mm -hmm. which has been uh, helping to uh, uh, improve the survival, survival rate of breast cancer, uh, they don't necessarily have cancer, right? They're screening for it. The goal, and that's one reason for making it easy, affordable, you know, cheap, and all of that, so that as many people as, as, as possible to try it, of course, Cancer patients 
for recurrence, they can all do that. But our goal is really to make this so common that just, you know, if people over age of 18 mm -hmm. continue using it. And so if it happens, you catch it as early yeah. as possible. And plus you don't have that exposure to radiation that you have with the mammograms and some That's of the right. other things. The so liquid it's a biopsy way. has that great advantage okay. that if you have a reliable liquid biopsy mm -hmm. test and approach, uh, that, that doesn't have any of those mm -hmm. side effects. Right. Now, you have several patents. Explain what your patents are. Are they related to this test? Absolutely, okay. yeah. Well, I mean, my own patents in my life, yeah, I mean, they're, they're in many different areas. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are related to the company, to Pi Sigma, and for our technologies, uh, we are um, very adamant in, in covering uh, everything we do with uh, uh, patents and patent portfolio. We have a pretty extensive set that covers different aspects of the work because, as I said, this is a mix of biology, biochemistry, engineering, and all of these combined. And every one of those, like in uh, microfluidics, we have patents in what is known as lateral flow assay, which is the technology that's used for pregnancy tests oh. and the COVID test. Mm that everyone is familiar with mm -hmm. and you routinely oh, yeah. do this. <laughs> that lateral flow assay technology, we've created a next generation of that. And um, so patents in those areas, in microfluidics, as I say, in our assay and approach, you have an assay you call an exosome assay for uh, detecting cancer, patent on that, and all of these different aspects. So it's just covered from every angle, and, and, and the antibody that is for the detection. Okay. Um, what is the regulatory process for this treatment? I guess not really a treatment device. No, device, right. Yeah. What's the FDA? So th this will require, and we are, we are going to do, the plan is to do this in two steps. Uh, one is first provide the same test, the same test that eventually is going to be, hopefully a kind of like a home test and a cartridge, a simple cartridge, as a lab test but a bit different than the conventional lab test that you're, you know, it takes a long time to describe what it is, but it's a bit different than your regular lab. It's still an LDT laboratory developed test, clear approval, with clear approval. And that would be our first goal to provide that. Uh, following that, there'll be a long FDA process for taking that to the cartridge that we have developed, optimizing it for that and doing the trial for it. And that will be a long-term mm -hmm. trial with a um, large number of patients, mm -hmm. uh, of course. And uh, that's that. this is our kind of two-step process. Yes. The first step offers the product at a certain level, paves the way for the rest. The rest will take a little longer and um, mm -hmm. you have all the patients in the world to yeah. try to get it there. Do you have, what would be like a, say, best case scenario time schedule for when this will actually be used? Uh, so in about um, two to two and a half years, um, uh, as you know, we're doing our Series A around, and once we complete that within two to two and a half years, uh, we hope to have our lab test the way I was mm -hmm. telling you about as an automated lab test. Uh, and uh, following that, I would estimate it would be at least three years after that before we are at the point that, that there's, a, there's a cartridge. That you'd be able to right. buy it at the grocery store or the drugstore well, or something like that? Well, probably won't be a grocery store okay. first, <laughs> but I wouldn't go that far because that gets just too... I'm thinking like COVID yeah. tests. Well, no, no, yeah. it, will, it will eventually, it can eventually be that, Okay. but uh, there are certain things you have to follow to get to that stage. Yeah. And, um, you know, the process is quite uh, involved and complicated. We are ready to, to do it yeah. and we are working towards that goal, obviously. Yeah, I know but, the regulations are very to get right, through that course. process. I mean, you should, an, of, you should understand yeah. what it takes to really and, get this through the process. And then I guess if somebody notices some change, it will alert them, the cartridge would alert them, and then they would go to a specialist. Okay, so there. that's a very good um, uh, point. Um, one of the advantages of doing regular testing, right, uh, is that you build a trend. Right. If I'm testing, say, for cancer, some people might argue with me, well, not every month is necessary. You know, mm -hmm. some others say it's fantastic. Some, you know, but, but what we settle on at the end, whether it's every month or every two months mm -hmm. or every quarter. But if you're doing this test regularly, right, you're establishing a trend. Like, let's assume it's every month and for three years you've done this. Mm -hmm. 
36 data points that you have that it is all negative. And then all of a sudden you have two positives. Mm -hmm. Then because you have established that trend, you have most likely detected something. Much like when uh, men do PSA tests, mm -hmm. it's what is very important is the change, you know, how it's, you know, what has been the trend, you know. There are some people who have very high PSA and don't have cancer and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fine and nothing wrong. And, but there are some who have a very low PSA and all of a sudden in the span of month, some short time, that jumps up and then that becomes suspicious. Mm -hmm. But establishing that trend uh, is very valuable data. That, so that means once you have this test on the market, hopefully, as time goes on, it kind of builds on itself. You yeah. know? So, and then I guess if you see some change, you make an appointment with your general that practitioner? Is, uh, so the test yeah. is a screening test, not a diagnostic test. It's mm -hmm. for majority of cancers. Again, we never claim every cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and once that happens, then we have ways of, now that this has happened, right? Uh, what is it, which organ it came from? You know what it could be, and then you enter. We have we have a uh, whole network of um, how we're going to distribute that, this test to everyone and track results and everything mm -hmm. else, and then uh, hold their hands um, and where we're going after that once it is positive. Yeah. Right. So what uh, what are your goals with two pi sigma and and for cancer patients? What would you like to see happen? So, but, but obviously, like to see happen. This is this is my life's passion essentially. I know. Uh, I won't um, rest until <laughs> this happens, uh, is to see this test routinely used by uh, everyone mm -hmm. to monitor for this cancer, this evil. Uh, I have seen it way too, I have lost way too many people, friends and relatives, and I am sure that's an experience that many, uh, you know, have gone through the same thing most likely and nothing better to know that if it's detected early, I mean, there are three cancers, pro, uh, breast, colon, and prostate that are detected in the stage one. You're far ahead. I mean, you really, uh, it can really save your life. And those three by themselves is enough, but the hope is to be able to catch the thing early enough mm -hmm. so the treatment will be more effective, less costly, and the potential of saving your life yeah. if, if you run it. Well, thank you. A very important work you're doing. And uh, thank you for coming and explaining to Pi Sigma. And best of luck. Thank you so much. We are really excited and energized. Thank, thank you, you so much.